We're joined by Eugene Tan. He's Associate Professor at Singapore Management University's School of Law. Eugene, first off, what do you make of the changes? You know, were you expecting more wide-ranging, um, you know, changes in Cabinet? Um, to be honest, yes. I think there was the expectation that, um, you know, in the, the need to get the younger generation leaders up to speed, um, you know, that they would have been assigned to more portfolios. So if you look at uh, um, uh, Minister Heng Sui Kiat, you know, he would still continue, he wouldn't have served in two portfolios, education and finance. Uh, and that's very much also the same for uh, the other 4G ministers, you know. So I, I would have thought that um, the plan would be to um, expose them to new assignments. Um, but I think PM Lee's intention was to make it abundantly clear, um, you know, that uh, Minister Heng Sui Kiat, you know, is... Um, the successor, um, you know, to, uh, to him, um, you know, that, that there shouldn't be any doubt as to um, who the prime, next prime minister would be. Um, and I think, you know, this was really the whole purpose of, of, of the cabinet reshuffle, you know, to, to sharpen the focus right at the top of the, of the cabinet um, and to enable, you know, Mr. Hing now, you know, to have a big hand, a big say in moulding, you know, the, the next generation of leadership in terms of... Uh, who's going to play what role and, and, and how they're going to be prepared uh, for the roles that, 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 that they're going to assume. Um, so I think all said, you know, it, it was a kept deliberately minimal in terms of the changes, uh, but I think the signalling uh, was very strong, you know, who is going to be the next Prime Minister, and, and, and I think that has been, uh, there's no doubt about it now. Let me, let me start by asking you, you're the acting Prime Minister now. Can you just tell us, you know, we're curious as Singaporeans, when you're the acting Prime Minister... Does it mean you have a lot more hours, a lot more responsibilities? Does your workload increase? And, you know, does the Prime Minister say, OK, uh, you know, because I'm away, you have to do all these extra things? Well, I certainly have to uh, perform the duty of the Prime Minister in Singapore. Yep. So, for instance, yesterday I just chaired uh, our cabinet meeting. Uh -huh. I'm u I usually just attend the cabinet meeting okay. the Prime Minister <laughs> chairs it, but yesterday I chaired the meeting and took the decisions yesterday. Wow, yeah. OK. So it's a bit of a warm-up. Uh, for you? Well, we, we have been uh, operating as a cabinet system for many, many years right, now. And right. uh, it, I'm, you know, I'm used to being a member of the cabinet, but uh, leading it is a different experience. It's a different experience. Right. Right. Will Singaporeans have to wait until phase three for the Singapore government to hold the next general election? The three phases are for us to begin to reopen the economy and reopen our society and we have to do it uh, carefully. Over the next few months, you know, we, as we reopen the economy, we must ensure that we are able to uh, control this, uh, the outbreak of this uh, pandemic. But looking further ahead, I think we will have many significant challenges because the global situation remains very difficult both on the uh, COVID-19 front as well as on the economic front. I expect the global economy uh, to be in a, a fairly uh, difficult position, even though uh, other economies are beginning to reopen. And we'll see what happens. But even then, there are significant structural challenges that we are facing, for which we will have to uh, deal with. So it is not a set of issues that we deal with over the next you know, six to nine months or one year, but a set of issues that we need to deal with over the next five and even ten years for us to emerge stronger, for us to uh, manage this crisis of a generation as best as we can. So it is important for all Singaporeans to begin to focus our minds on how we can come together to overcome this crisis of our generation and how we can then rally together to emerge stronger. And that requires a long runway. And uh, the sooner that we can deal with the longer term challenges, the better the Singaporeans will emerge out of this and that Singapore will emerge stronger. Having worked with PM, ESM and MM, I know that the top job imposes exceptional demands on the office holder. It is in a very different post-COVID world, the demands will be even more exacting. While I'm in good health today, 
It is in the best interest of the nation for someone who is younger to tackle the huge challenges ahead. After careful deliberation and discussions with my family, I've decided to step aside as leader of the 4G team so that a younger leader who will have a longer runway can take over. 